He's the Chief Executive of Pocky Australia. He's going to start us off today, so uh, welcome to Mark. Thanks, John. Rick Charlesworth is undoubtedly one of Australia's most successful and uh, incredible coaches, and he's got a huge history of success with the Kookaburras and the Hockey Roos, and without a doubt, he's in the top echelons of international hockey coaches. We are delighted today to announce that Rick will be extending beyond the 2012 London Olympics through to 2014, uh, following the completion of the Hockey World Cup and the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow in August 2014. Today is a pivotal announcement for us, uh, but we're very mindful of our first priority is London in 2012. Uh, it's clearly only 12 months away and our, our very much our first priority and a lot of our focus is about how do we achieve success in London. But having said that, clearly our responsibility is also about ensuring that we have sustainable success beyond the London Olympics and this announcement will certainly position the national team, the Kookaburras and our national network extremely well with Rick at the helm. Rick has an indisputable coaching record, uh, he's entered every Commonwealth Games, World Cup and Olympic Games that Rick has coached, he's ended that tournament with success with a gold medal. It's an incredible coaching record and one that we believe will continue and we are delighted that Rick's agreed to stay with us through to 2014 to ensure that we are positioning ourselves to have sustainable success. Rick is certainly the leader of our men's national program but I also recognise and Rick certainly recognises he heads up a great team. He heads up a great team of athletes and a great team of uh, our assistant coaches and high performance staff. And we believe not only Rick, uh, but certainly that staff that we've got in place will ensure that our success will be uh, continuing into 2014 and beyond. So I'm very pleased to announce Rick's extension post London in 2012. Uh, we're delighted that he's agreed to continue with us and we're confident that Rick is the best person to lead us forward uh, for future success into 2014 and positioning us beyond. So I'll hand across to Phil Bourgeau. Phil is the AIS Acting Director. The AIS, as you know, is a, is a great partner of Hockey Australia and our national programs and uh, I'd like to hand across to Phil for a few words also. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Mark. The Australian Government, through the AIS and the Australian Sports Commission, is a very strong supporter of, of hockey uh, through the AIS programs based out of Perth and, and as such we are absolutely delighted to re-sign Rick uh, as one of uh, Australia's most successful and iconic uh, Olympic coaches. It's, it's terrific to have Rick back on board for uh, the, the commencement of the, uh, of the Rio cycle and uh, we have every confidence that that will uh, lead the Kookaburras uh, into a great place for, uh, to be well positioned for, for medal success in, uh, in, in yet another cycle. So, uh, Rick, fantastic to have you on board again. And we'll just uh, throw over to Rick for a, a few comments and then certainly we'll open for questions if you want to catch it. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm pleased to uh, have, the, if you like, some uh, uh, continuity after uh, after London. Certainly London is the medium and short term focus for the, the Kookaburras. Um, I don't think you do this sort of job unless you've got the energy and drive to, uh, to want it. And uh, when one looks towards Rio, that's a long distance. And so I think this is an appropriate, uh, appropriate um, decision for the moment, certainly in terms of where I'm at and uh, what the future looks like. I think the, the, the final mark, the remark that Mark made is perhaps the most relevant. Um, you don't succeed unless you have gifted, talented, hard-working players in your program and I've been a very lucky coach in the sense that I've uh, inherited groups of athletes who, uh, who had that. I think that uh, the structure in our sport enables us to uh, keep bubbling up quality athletes and, and uh, as a coach uh, when you uh, when you have the opportunity to work with such people and to have around you uh, quality coaches who support you, then uh, you can be successful. I have uh, I'm glad that 
and the AIS and Hockey Australia are so sanguine about uh, the future. I know how difficult it is to uh, win a medal, any medal at the Olympics and uh, at the World Cup or at, at, at the Commonwealth Games. And so I don't underestimate how difficult the task is ahead of us. This job with the Kookaburras is a much harder job than the job that I had with the Hockey Roos in the sense that our athletes are much more widely distributed around the world and getting them together is very difficult. Indeed, since the Commonwealth Games last year, we've had our full group of athletes together for just one week. And uh, that's nearly a year. So we're, it's a very, very difficult task. Hopefully, over the next number of months, we'll be able to uh, consolidate what we've started. And if we do so, then we're going to be uh, a very good team by London. That's, my, uh, that's what I anticipate. And I hope uh, that after London, we're going to be able to further embellish that group of athletes and uh, develop uh, an even better group going, uh, going forward. That's enough from me. <laughs> Rick, uh, you know, coaching's a, uh, a, a fraught uh, business for the best of times, but to have that security going on for uh, another Olympiad, what does that do uh, for a coach? Well, uh, yeah, security is perhaps not the word that I, I would use. What it does say is that uh, you know you, you can plan accordingly uh, and appropriately. I think uh, one of the dilemmas in our sport is we're locked into the Olympic cycle and everything stops after London. I hope this allows us to have some continuity following that. Um, as it presently stands, I won't be the coach in uh, Rio, that's the sort of thing I think you have to keep revisiting. Um, but I'm sure what that will enable us to do is to put in place a program and uh, the sort of personnel who, who will be able to seamlessly carry on uh, if, in, if in a couple of years after the Olympics, that's enough for me. The way I'm feeling at the moment, I think that's as far as you ever ought to look. And indeed, I think as a coach, you're continually revisiting your energy and, and your drive and, and where you're standing, whether or not um, this job, which is very demanding, fits in with uh, the other parts of your life. Do you have an heir apparent or a succession plan in place or anything in mind in that sort of idea? It seems to be a, it's, a popular it's, thing in coaching now. It's very interesting. Well, I think we've got Australian coaches uh, all over the world at the moment. The coach of France, the coach of Belgium, the coach, <coughs> the women's coach in New Zealand. Uh, um, there are a range of former, former Australians or Australians have been working in our programs, working in other countries, and uh, there are, uh, you know, there are the assistant coach in Germany is an Australian. There are people <coughs> all around the world who would aspire to the job, and there are a range of very good coaches working in our program at the moment who uh, would aspire to the job. I think uh, the challenge will be for us to find, you know, when the time comes, the appropriate person. Uh, that won't be for me to decide, but. I, I, I think we are in a position where we do have uh, a number of possibilities and some pretty deep coaching stops. Are you expecting, um, Mark, are you expecting a, a flood of uh, interest coming in from those people you just sort of mentioned or are you going to go out there and scout around? Yeah, we, we've certainly had a, a number of discussions about succession planning and I think the, the beauty of this announcement is that it does give us the next three years to ensure that we are successful, but also ensure that we've got the plans in place to ensure that that is sustainable in terms of the success. So in terms of succession planning, uh, we have got, in broad terms, a time frame that we would allow us to recruit Rick's replacement, but importantly as well that that replacement, whether it's inside the program or outside or international, that they're working with Rick for an extensive period of time to ensure that that handover is as smooth as possible. So it's something, as an organisation, we've given a lot of attention to. If we can do it well, we believe it's going to position us extremely well, and certainly tapping into Rick's expertise and knowledge is going to be a key part of that. I mean, I think there's this thing about the head coach, you know, almost like being the iconic person or the, the being sacrosanct. The reality is that you work as a coaching team and maybe breaking down that stereotype is part of what has to happen in the coaching sense over a period of time anyway. I couldn't do the job without the people who work around me and without their contributions and their important contributions and indeed sometimes they're more important than mine. So uh, I, th I think that uh, 
that has to be understood. And you know, while that sort of iconic stereotype is good for coaches who are trying to negotiate their salary when they're <coughs> when they're uh, you know, spruiking for jobs, um, the reality is a little bit different to that. Rick, the, you've got an amazing amount of Olympic experience and your record's phenomenal. You said that the Kookaburras is going to be a much harder task than the Hockey Roos. How are you going to approach the next three months? Because they're going to be crucial for you, aren't they? Yeah, the next three months are very important. We've had a range of uh, injuries more than you would normally have in any particular period of time for all sorts of reasons. And they're all, it's not, there's not particularly a pattern to it, but a whole range of those people who have been out of play for a while are going to be you know, training with us in September. And during September, we're going to be, we've got a block of training which we haven't had for a while now. If I was the national soccer coach, a month of training would be heaven. <laughs> that guy only gets a couple of weeks here and there. You know, but uh, when I was coaching the hockey roos, the players were much more accessible than, than, than this group of athletes have been. So that's a very important time. We've got Olympic qualifier, we've got Super Series in Perth, we've got some matches against India and Pakistan, then we've got a few more weeks of training and we play in the Champions Trophy, which is the main event of the year, then we get a break at Christmas. So those three months are an important time for consolidating. We, we went to Europe recently and played. We played in a tournament in Malaysia in May and uh, we've made some discoveries. We, uh, we know that there's a lot of things that we need to improve on and work on and consolidate. I've never thought that, that uh, the end point was uh, one or two years or whatever. I always thought to really get a team playing as you want them to, you're talking in the four to six year bracket, and especially when you don't have the sort of access uh, to the players that you would like to have perhaps in some sports where we haven't been able to get in this group. Over the next three months, what sort of prop approach will you be taking with the team? Will you be looking at, at young kids and you know, especially using things like the hockey league out here or will it be focusing on, on your big guns and, and getting things right? Well, it, you know, I mean, you, you make a mistake if you're focusing on the final group too early or too late and uh, mixing that cocktail is a difficult thing. We've got, a, we've got a group of 40 out squad, and there's a few others who may be on the periphery who are looking at always. Um, so I think we'll continue to mix and match. Not all of our senior players are going to be match fit and ready to play in October anyway. So we'll, 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 we'll continue to do that. When we come to the end of the year in the Champions Trophy, then we may well take some prospective players to that. It might not be our most senior group because that experience will be an important part of someone being ready to play uh, in the London Olympics. So that, that process will continue, but there comes a time, and more likely next year, when you know, you'll, you'll uh, fine tune it. With your achievements in the last 12 months, Rick, it sets the expectations very high, and Australia will look at that and say, you're favourite for gold. Is that fair? What do you expect? Well, yeah, I mean, we can't control what Australia will think. I, I always have in the back of my mind this very sobering thought that the world champion, the world record holder, wins one event in four at the Olympics. So the other three are upsets. Um, so being the world champion or world record holder doesn't make you a shoe in at the Olympics. Ours is a complex, integrated team activity, low scoring, and therefore one or two things can, uh, can upset you. Um, so it, it's, uh, and it's also a hard medal to win. You start on the first or second day of the Olympics and you go, you have ups and downs all the way through and you have to play on the second last day. So uh, while well, all the other stuff's happening, the Olympics, it's, it's, it's a, a thousand marathon. And uh, we, uh, you have to negotiate that. <coughs> so I know how difficult it is. I also know that when, you know, the, the hard part about this job is you start, um, and in the end you get measured on the last two matches in a four year cycle. <laughs> it's pretty tough. You know, but I suppose that's the sort of thing that, that happens uh, when, you, uh, when you coach the, the rugby team. It's the World Cup and, and uh, or, or uh, you know, the, the, the football soccer team. It's, it's the World Cup performance that is the critical one. So I know that's the case. We can't do much about what the anticipation is. We're a good team. We expect to do well. We'll, we'll set high standards for ourselves. 
we have to go out there and, and, and deliver it day after day during the Olympics in a, in a tough forming a competition. Um, I think the players understand that's, that's the deal. It's an incredibly stressful situation when you, when you put it like that because you've got two matches, it comes down to those two matches. How, is, is managing stress one of the biggest well, challenges? Yeah, the mental challenge is a, is a great one. But you've got to get to those last two games. We might, you might not even make it to the last two games. That's a, you've got to achieve that before you worry about what happens in those games. And really, um, that, that's what we have to do. I mean, all of the preparation is about preparing the athletes because when the, when the thing starts, when the game starts, the coaches are largely irrelevant. You know, we think a bit at the edges, but they have to make all the important decisions and judgments in the game. And, and our job is to prepare them to do so, uh, and, and you know that 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 will, that's the challenge. What will security be like for our athletes in London? Well, if you've been watching the telly <laughs> the last few days, then uh, you, you you'd be concerned. I imagine there'll be a bit of a crackdown there in London now. But um, what you're seeing on the telly is maybe less of a problem than the other covert things that they would be also concerned about. I was I was an athlete in Munich. So in the whole experience of my Olympic life, um, that's been an issue. Perhaps it was the biggest issue for the, you know, for the Olympics then, back in, in Munich in 1972. So um, the reality is this is a big event worldwide, lots of publicity there for it's a forum for somebody who wants to make a noise or make, or make a statement. So the Olympics ever since Munich, Munich have had that uh, as part of the deal. London will be no different, but uh, it, we can only hope that uh, what's put in place will, will, will be substantial. I expect that it will be. I expect that the games will be superbly organised, knowing what I know about where they're at at the moment and all of that stuff. Will be <coughs> good, but who can who can tell them what uh, some some uh, aberrant force might bring about? I don't I think as a program we had the experience going to the uh, Delhi World Cup where as a program we're having to deal with those security threats. Uh, some great learnings came out of that. I think as a program and as an organisation, I think uh, should we need to, we, we've got the right plans in place, but I think the, both the coaches and the athletes lived through that. Uh, we did improve, we will get better, uh, and I'm sure there's some good learnings coming out. We hope obviously that situation doesn't emerge in London, but we are well placed to deal with it. Is it an added pressure on the athletes? Well, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's one of the things that's out there. Certainly there were people who were nervous about going to the Commonwealth Games and going to the World Cup in Delhi. But, um, you know, you have, to, you, have to, you have to handle that. That's just part of the background noise. Once you get to the Olympics and you're there and involved in it, I don't think unless something happens, um, it's, it's, it, it, it overrides the competition. Does it make you nervous at all going over to London seeing those scenes? Well, I mean, same to you, Mark. I'm, I'm going there next week. You know? <laughs> um, that? Well, you know, look, all during the 70s we were going to London and bombs were going off in the streets of London. You know, the IRA were going for it. I mean, uh, I was in Madrid the day that uh, going to the train station, on the way to the train station, the bomb went off there. You know, I was travelling through London on the way to Rotterdam in 2005 and the bomb went off. I mean, the, the reality is that's the world. I lived in India for a year and the bombs were going off a lot of the time. How can you, how can you manage your life if you're worried about those sorts of things? What we've seen at the London Organising Committee is that they, they have excellent plans in place for the Olympics and what we've seen right, right through and that will cover security as well. So we're extremely confident that they'll have planned for those contingencies and, and they'll have them in place that will cover it. So there's certainly a good level of confidence from us and uh, they'll have the right plans in place leading in. With what's your, um, in, in those, with, with your experience in being in those areas and like you mentioned, uh, in your squad, bearing in mind there is a strong culture of experience as well as Mark was saying, with, uh, with Delhi and everything. Um, when you do see a nervous player, someone who is concerned, what sort of advice would you give them? Well, I think what we, you, you, the best thing you can do with it in these circumstances is talk about how they're feeling. 
and, and so you know we have the sports psychology supports in our organisation, and it's part of that that provides counselling in those sorts of circumstances. And uh, you know, the, the, I think the best thing you can do is talk about it. just like when there are issues with your team that are subterranean. The worst thing you can do is just get let them bubble underneath. There, there really needs to be an openness about what's going on and, and uh, what the dynamics of the group are. You know, sometimes. Yeah, every, everybody will feel differently about a particular circumstance, recognising and dealing with the ones who are most nervous as part of the deal. But you have athletes who are by nature anxious, and managing their anxiety in a performance environment is also part of the job. And, and so uh, that's, that's the deal. Okay, great, wrap it up, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, guys? Okay, great, wrap it up, thank you. Thank you.